Tava fazendo certo. Vamos ver se estoura os pneus. Welcome to the SG27 Flanker. The Flanker is one of the most dominant air security fighters in modern day combat aviation. Equipped with powerful sensors, weapons, and a data link, it is a match for any aircraft you may encounter in DCS world. In addition to its air to air capabilities, it can also perform a secondary ground strike role with unguided bombs and rockets. Before we start to blow things up, though, let's first learn how to start up this bird and pass it to the runway. The first start thing up. Is start the electrical power by pressing right shift and L. Legal. Still electrical. With the electrical power now engaged, you can see that the heads-up display or HUD comes to life, as well as many instruments and cockpit lights. Before moving the aircraft, make sure that more than three minutes have elapsed in order to let the horizontal situation indicator gyro to align properly. Now that you have power, let's turn on the navigation lights by pressing right, control, and L. Next, let's close the canopy by pressing left, control, and C. Our next step is to start our two engines. Before you do so, make sure your throttle controller has a zero power setting. Start the left engine by pressing right, alt, and home. With the left engine started, press right, control, and home to start the right engine. In the center of your front dash is the RPM engine gauge with two needles. When an engine is being started, one of the two green lights below the engine temperature gauge will light. Once the light turns off, it indicates the engine is ready for operation. In the lower left corner of the dash is an aircraft symbol that indicates the status of your flaps, landing gear, and air brake. Lower your flaps to the takeoff position by pressing left shift and F. We're now ready to taxi, so slowly increase the throttles by moving your throttle control forward or pressing page up. To reduce throttle, use your throttle controller or press page down. To use the wheel brakes, press W. Start rolling forward and turn to the left of the taxiway ahead. Press Z to steer left and press X to steer right. Alt key. Não falou do alt key. You're now heading in the right direction. Keep your taxi speed around 20 kilometers per hour, as indicated in the top left corner of the HUD. As you taxi, use small, smooth rudder corrections to keep you aligned on the center of the taxiway. 
At the fork, hang a right to reach the runway. As we taxi, you can go to external view by pressing F2 and return to the cockpit by pressing F1. You can zoom in and out using the keypad star and forward slash keys. Rotate the views using the keypad directional keys. We've now reached the runway threshold. Taxi on the runway to the right and align yourself down the length of it. Once aligned down the runway, increase the thrust of both engines to maximum and use gentle inputs of the rudders to keep you tracking down the center line. Increase speed to 250 kilometers per hour and then gently pull back on the controller to allow the aircraft to fly itself off the runway. Sobre gear. Positive climb established. Raise the landing gear by pressing G. In the top right corner of the HUD is your altitude in meters. Between the altitude and speed indication is your heading tail. Certo. Subiu os flap também, vamos flap. Aprendemos a decolar sem explodir nada, assim. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to navigate to an airfield and land on it. There are three navigation modes that we'll be using. In route, return to base, and landing. These sub-modes are selected automatically to appropriate points along the signed flight path, but they can also be cycled manually. In this lesson, we'll use the automatic way. I currently have the lesson paused as I explain some of the finer points. Press the spacebar to continue. What we learn in this lesson is how to navigate to waypoint using the route mode. Switch return mode automatically, and then switch to landing mode. 
Houses to fly from waypoint to waypoint. sequence automatically as we did in the previous navigation lesson. However, right. in this lesson, we will try the manual selection. Press the space bar to continue. Vai me ensinar a parte de navegação agora. Ele falou que tem o ANR que é o in route. Sim, o RTB que é o retorno de base. Tem o LND que é o land, que é o pulso. You can see that waypoint 2 is 15.5 kilometers from us. As we learned in the prior lesson, we can see the direct heading of the waypoint is indicated by the yellow arrow on the HSI and the twin white arrows indicate our path to fly the course line. Directly above the HSI is the attitude director indicator or ADI. This is a sphere with one hemisphere white and one hemisphere black. In the center of the ADI is a white aircraft symbol. This ah, aircraft symbol stays stationary in pitch, but will rotate as you maneuver and roll. Tio. The ADI ball Ele will move the pitch in relation to the aircraft symbol. When the aircraft symbol center is over black, your nose is below the horizon. If the aircraft symbol center is over white, your nose is pointing above the horizon. Press the space bar to continue. Okay. Parte do HUD que é simples, qualquer um entende. In the center of the ADI are two yellow lines to help assist you reach the waypoint via the course line. The course line is a direct line between two waypoints. The vertical line indicates your required azimuth steering to reach and maintain the course line. When the yellow vertical line is centered on the ADI, you are flying on or to the course line. If the vertical line is off to either side, put your stick in that direction until the vertical line centers on the ADI and adjust your roll to keep it centered. The yellow horizontal line indicates your elevation course steering. When centered on the ADI, you are flying at or to the set course altitude for that waypoint. If the yellow line is on the lower half of the ADI, push the stick forward until the yellow horizontal line centers on the ADI and adjust pitch to keep it centered. Conversely, if the yellow horizontal line is above the center line of the ADI, pull back on the stick until the line centers. Along the top and left side of the ADI are your heading and elevation deviation scales. The more the lines are from center, the greater are you off the direct path to reach the waypoint. Let's practice this as we fly to waypoint two. I'll unpause the lesson when you press the space bar. Okay, vai liberar o avião. You will first need to intercept the course line between waypoints one and two. Note that the ADI steering bars in the HUD navigation circle provide us the same information. Fly the aircraft to center the ADI steering bars by adjusting the pitch and roll. Tá falando the dessas centered on the ADI. Dessas Or, barrinhas aqui amarela. Que ela indica a mesma coisa. Que essa bolinha aqui que é o main route. Also remember that the assigned airspeed and altitude for the waypoint are indicated as smaller digits above your current airspeed and altitude. Fly to waypoint 2. Muito rápido. Nice job. As you may have noticed, the waypoint automatically cycles to waypoint three. Go ahead and fly to waypoint three along the course line. Maintain a speed of around 400 kilometers per hour.
Now that you have reached the last en route waypoint, notice that the return mode has automatically been selected as indicated by RTN in the lower left corner of the HUD. Right, we'll hit the navigation steering will now provide you steering to intercept the instrumented landing system beams at the proper heading and altitude. Fly the assigned return navigation. A gente tá no trem aqui porque o trem tá ruim. Puxando para baixo. Legal. We've now entered the ILS beams and have automatically switched to the landing mode as indicated by the LNDG indication in the bottom left corner of the HUD. The ILS contains a glide slope beam to help guide you vertically and the localizer beam helps you to guide horizontally. Below the landing indication is a K indication that lets you know that you have captured the ILS beams. The upside down L in the lower left side of the HUD indicates that you are on glide slope. If you have not already done so, reduce your airspeed to less than 400 kilometers per hour and lower your landing gear by pressing G. If you need to, deploy your air brakes by pressing B. Lower your landing flaps by pressing left shift and F. Press the space bar to continue. Baixa de 400 por hora, você baixa o trem de pouso e liga os flap também. Só que eu estou muito baixo aqui. Alinhado com a pista, eu acho. Um pouquinho mais para a direita. Agora eu estou mais alto do que o que eu deveria. Agora eu estou mais baixo. Eu acho que eu bati a cauda no chão, mas tudo bem.
mesmo. Cusão. Pouso difícil. Devia ter dado um. Watch In past two lessons, we learned the basics of navigation and landing under ideal conditions. In this lesson, we're going to put what you learned to the test by finding an airfield and landing on it at night during a thunderstorm. Sounds fun, huh? Let's turn on the cockpit lighting by pressing L. We're currently in route mode, but we have no airfield at the final route destination. So let's select return mode by pressing 1. Dá pra return mode. Using what you learned about course steering through the HUD and ADI, fly the assigned return course that will lead you to the ILS intercept for Beslan Airfield. As you start to descend, you'll probably pick up a lot of speed. Don't forget that you can deploy the air brakes by pressing B. Break. As we get closer to the airfield, I should also mention that not all airfields have Russian ILS, as we had in the last lesson. Airfields that do include Mozdok, Krimsk, Maikop, and Krasnodar Center. Being that Beslan does not have this, you will not have the HUD ILS indications. However, if you look down at your HSI, you will notice a dashed cross in the center 
in both solid vertical and horizontal lines. The dash lines are fixed and represent the optimal glide slope and localizer positions with the solid lines. Press the spacebar to continue. Legal. Because the bar here in baixo is the optimal glide slope. If the glide slope bar is below the dash Gear line, down. you are above glide slope. Gear down. If it is above the dash Gear line, down. you are under glide slope. If the localizer line is left of center, you need to fly to the left. If the localizer is to the right of center, you need to fly to the right. You always fly to the needle. As you pass over the inner marker beacon, you may have noticed a little bit of crosswind from south to north. To counter this, input a little left rudder by pressing Z and add a little right bank to keep your nose tracking down the runway. Quebrei o bagulho aqui. Quebrei alguma coisa. Tô virando para direito sozinho. Looks like you got her down, but the ground crew is not going to happen if the work is done. You can end the lesson now by pressing the escape key. Oxe, apagaram até as luzes. de novo Pera aí que eu quero entender a gente tinha que ter saído aqui está chovendo e tudo mais ó. não enxergar porra nenhuma por que, que ele vai para esquerda velho é isso ele vai para esquerda sozinho Não dá pra ver nada, Não nada. Pá, 
Caraca, aqui mesmo. Nossa, onde eu entrei? É garagem aqui. Tem uns lugarzinhos pra parar aqui também. Nossa, tem um lugar pior lugar que tem. É. Interessante. 